He said, I, I cannot not go. I cannot live comfortably in Europe, in France, while knowing that people are suffering in the country that I love, which is Afghanistan. So I will never not be able to sacrifice even my freedom to give voice to the people who really need it. It was a Wednesday, the 5th of January. Um, I was going to Copenhagen and he was going to Afghanistan. And uh, I remember crying as I've always been crying because he was leaving. Um, but uh, actually he was quite confident. He's really always confident that everything will be okay, everything will be positive. So I would, I never imagined that this could have happened. Afghanistan. In any case, Afghanistan is also in the red zone, a very serious situation. In mid-August 2021, the fall of Kabul was simply a turning point. The Taliban were already in power once. But in those 20 years when they weren't in power, it has to be said that a very vibrant and diverse media landscape was able to develop in Afghanistan. It was still a dangerous job to work as a journalist in Afghanistan. The Taliban completely destroyed this really vibrant media landscape. More than half of the 550 media outlets still registered in 2021 have now disappeared. When I was in Kabul, there were also some issues where the Taliban did not want international reporters to cover them. For example, women's protests. There was a scene where all the journalists who went to a protest were arrested. The internationals were released shortly afterwards. But still, that's the way they operate. You can no longer work freely. It's also the case that these people, including those left behind by the international press, who we often work with as translators or fixers, are left behind and that their lives and the lives of their families are at stake. At the same time, it has to be said that the international press cannot report completely freely either because there is this control by the Taliban. I don't know what values stand for a free, open democracy if not freedom of the press and women's rights. I would absolutely say that this struggle is representative of a free Afghanistan. My name is Alexandra Mustavaye and I'm the wife of the detained Frank Amgen journalist Mortoza Behbuti. He was arrested on the 7th of January, just a couple of days after he arrived to Afghanistan. Um, and I learned about it immediately because he was not answering my messages, he was not answering my calls, and usually we talk every day when he's away. So I knew something was wrong, and I messaged everyone that I could imagine would know, everyone in Afghanistan, people that we have in common, and uh, they told me that, yes, he's arrested, and I really remember this day because it was in the morning and I didn't even take the curtains off. It was still completely dark and the whole day I was just in this state of shock and darkness. I, I, I didn't even like turn on the light, nothing. It was completely dark. I was even in bed crying and being worried, but also I was really furious. My dearest husband, I wish that it would be you talking right now to the camera, to the public and speaking your truth. But sadly, I have to do that instead and just, just say that I really, really love you so, so dearly, that you're so missed and that all of the support, it just shows that you're really, really needed back home. In the beginning, there was almost no contact for for seven months. Uh, the only time I could hear his voice was one minute on the 26th of January. It was just one minute. He was saying, don't worry, I'm coming back home. 
but at the same time in his voice I could hear him he was about to cry and this also clearly shows more to that personality he would never want to make anyone worry on the um, 6th of February we, we chose to go public also to counteract the accusation of espionage to say that he's not a spy because people are clearly seeing him as a journalist clearly he's just doing his job We went in Afghanistan together last year. We work uh, a long time uh, together about uh, what, what is happening in Afghanistan now that Taliban's are back. I would say that it's uh, wonderful, I think, for a journalist. Uh, to work with another journalist like Morteza is one of the best experiences in life. For me, it was really a very good experience. Morteza is not only now a friend, but he's also, for me, one of the best journalists I've met in my job. I would say he's the most selfless person I've ever met. Uh, actually, maybe selfless to a fault. I would be begging him, I would be crying as well and asking him, yeah, maybe please don't go to Afghanistan, it's dangerous. You have a, the background of a minority ethnicity, uh, Hazara, which is also persecuted in Afghanistan. Uh, so we knew that he had been going and coming and going and coming to Afghanistan again and again, many times, which is really um, exceptional because he suffered uh, a lot in that country. Uh, and still, in order to report from it, he chose to go back again and again. He's done nothing wrong and he should be released. This is a matter of press freedom, freedom of expression. This is a matter of one man who has sacrificed a lot to showcase the true nature of the state of Afghanistan, to humanize the immigration journey, and now he is not supposed to be punished for this. In the middle of April, I was able to get a letter from him, from Red Cross, and then I received in total just two letters. And then in, in July, I got the first phone call. After all this time, um, in the end of July, and it was just five minutes, half of the time uh, I was crying, but also being so happy to, I was so shocked. And since then I've been able to have uh, phone calls with him regularly, but I still felt so alone because I shared this world with him is a really integral, integral part of my world and without him I am I don't feel whole so with when I could hear his voice it really really moved everything changed everything he's not healthy he's not fine he's exhausted he's tired he's furious he's uh, every kind of uh, feeling whenever he calls me I don't know how he will be feeling at that time, but nine months is a long time. And the prison in Afghanistan is one of the worst prisons in the world. And he was in maybe the worst prison in the world, which was the GDI prison, which meant that he was being tortured, uh, which meant that he was not being able to eat properly. He was not able to sleep. He was in a he is still in a room with 30 other people um, and he has to take pills, sleeping pills that are, can cause addiction but he, because otherwise he would not be able to function without sleeping at all. Uh, I think it's very important each voice matters uh, and uh, this uh, way we can build pressure not just on the Afghan uh, Taliban who are you know occupying Afghanistan right now uh, but also on the French government because I think uh, we need to remember that Murtaza is an Afghan journalist but he's also a French Afghan journalist and he was there working for French media uh, I'm really overwhelmed by how much support everyone is showing it's 
It's always so nice. I mean, there's not even space for everyone inside. I received some good news actually um, from the lawyers, Mortiza's lawyers. The news are that the judge has said that Mortiza is to be released and that the nine months are enough and that in a week and a half, something around that time, he will, he will be out of prison. So that's why uh, a lot of people are smiling. I was kidnapped without trial for nine months. They tortured me every day and night. They interrogated and beat me all the time. Also, during the night, only torture without asking any questions. My hands handcuffed, my feet cuffed, my eyes blindfolded. They didn't want to know who I was. They didn't want to know I was a journalist, a simple journalist, you know? I couldn't imagine staying alive because by the time they had me in the intelligence center for a month, they were actually ready to shoot. And all of a sudden, after 22 days, the agent said to me, he was very annoyed. He said, ah shit, we can't kill you because you're all over the media. It was the media that saved me. It's thanks to the media. It's thanks to the support committee. It's thanks to my wife, Alexandra, that I'm here, alive today, back in France. It's my fight to give a voice to those who don't have one. It's about getting back to my daily life. It's very difficult because I have nightmares. I wake up in the night two or three times. I'm scared. And one day I'm going to resume my daily life, breathe, get some air, go to restaurants like before, walk in the park, talk, meet my close friends, be with my wife Alexandra, and actually later resume my job as a journalist. This is my fight. Et en fait, plus tard, reprendre mon travail, le journalisme, c'est mon combat.